Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal on this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Babe podcast. I'm super excited to keep the show going. So I wanted to create an episode around money and how to get money to respond to you. And this is actually in response to a question that I got asked in my DMs inbox. And it was a question that was longer than, you know, those Q&A boxes that you can pop up. Well, there's only so much you can write in those boxes, right? You, you have to keep your questions super small and limited. And this person just happened to write a longer question and said, don't worry, you don't have to, you know, answer this right now. But it's, um, maybe a podcast episode, or actually maybe I think my team encouraged me to make this a podcast episode. So um, that's what's going to happen. I don't know who submitted this question, but if this is you, it's your lucky day because I am answering your question here, which is actually inspiring me to do something else that I have an idea about, which is I've heard this on other podcasts before, and I never really thought about doing this until I felt energy around responding to this question. And I thought to myself, how cool of it of an idea would it be if we have like a voicemail inbox or a way that you can send me a recorded voice note that I could directly respond to. So on the podcast, we would feature you literally asking the question, like as if you left me a voicemail or or as if you called me or left me a voice message in my text inbox. And then I'm literally responding to you with my voice. So it's like we're having a conversation and everyone else who has a similar question could benefit from it. So we're currently working out the logistics of that. The logistics themselves aren't aren't like complicated, but it's something that my team, of course, wants to streamline because we get such a slew of things in all directions all the time. And this is something I'm so genuinely grateful for. We have such a big business now and there's a lot going on. So we want to make sure it's as streamlined as possible (laughs) so no one is getting overwhelmed and it's a great experience for you too. And then if I feel inspired to answer your question, that will be a whole podcast episode. So stay tuned for that. I also wanted to thank every single one of you who has left me a review in the last week. It's been insane since I've come back to the podcast how many downloads have occurred on the last two episodes. I think we were like the first episode five days after I dropped the Q&A episode from two weeks ago or last week. I don't even remember. I feel like I'm in a weird time vortex right now. I'm like, what day is it? Oh yeah, it's Friday the 13th. Like what? Um, so I'm just in a different world right now. And my team was like, Catherine, in five days, we had 80,000 downloads. Um, on the episode that you dropped. And I'm like, what? That's amazing. So thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who has left a review. These reviews take five seconds out of your day, but they help me out so much more than you know. They help these episodes get into the hands of people who are hungry for manifestation knowledge. They are hungry for improving their lives and thinking differently in a way that brings them happiness and success and fulfillment in their lives. And by you leaving a review, you're actually actually being a part of the ripple effect that this podcast um, impacts in someone's life. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't yet done that at least once, maybe I'll take a second review from you. (laughs) If you already left one maybe years ago and you're like, you know what, I want to leave another 
go for it. It helps me out so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm a little fried right now. You know, why am I in a time vortex? Well, I'm a little fried right now from a spiritual retreat that I did um, over the weekend in Sedona. And we just extended our trip through my birthday. My birthday is actually two days um, from now of me recording this. By, but by the time you listen to this podcast episode, my birthday is already passed. And we decided to stay in Sedona for a little bit longer. Um, and I actually was supposed to have a launch for my vision board training start on Monday, uh, October 16th. And instead, I just had to push it back. But by pushing it back, it gave me so much more time to really sit with it and plan it. And it's going to be so much more epic than, of course, I initially intended. I feel like I I have this joke in all my programs that I can't just go surface level. It's impossible for me to go surface level. As much as I try to stay surface level, some way or another, I, I take you deep. It's my Mercury and Scorpio. It's just how I communicate with the world. I just go fucking deep. <laughs> I have so many planets in Scorpio, by the way. Um, and with that, some episodes are coming to the podcast around my most recent current iteration of my manifestation process. I sat down after this retreat and I thought to myself lately how I've been manifesting things and how I see things to occur as a general way of being in people's lives. Like, how do you actually get what you want in life? Like, what is the step-by-step process? So I'll share with you that process in an episode coming up, as well as those vision board hacks that I promised. So that's going to be part of the celebration of this launch of a vision board training where you're going to create a vision board that is in alignment directly with subconscious mind, with universal laws, with this manifestation process that I have created over the last few years um, and updated and upgraded and really just succinctly clarified or broken down. I don't know the right terminology here, but you know what I mean. And then create the actual vision board. And then how do you literally 3D print these pictures into your actual life. So that's what the training is going to be. I'm pricing it at $55 to start. So the first week that it's launching, it's only going to be $55. It's like a three-part or four-part masterclass with some visualizations and meditations to really lock this in for you so that you can collapse the timeline between where you are now and where you want to go. And I'm super excited about that. So that will be launching on October 23rd. Um, And that $55 special will stay live until October 30th when I will actually drop that masterclass in your inbox if you have purchased up until that point. Um, So I think that's it for the announcements that I wanted to share, just kind of update you on where things are at right now while I take this little break of staying up late literally till four, five, six in the morning with my best, bestest friends um, here in Sedona. And as you can imagine, once my baby came around, uh, once my family came on Tuesday after the weekend retreat, I had to start waking up at 5 a.m. again. And so this like this transition between being a night owl and then being like, oh shit, I have a baby. He's waking up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. It's just thrown me off, thrown me for a loop. So (laughs) if you're a parent, you get it. Um, Okay. So let's go into the question. Let's talk about how to get money to respond to you and what exactly does money respond to? How do we manifest more money? So here's the question. Hi, Catherine and team. I saw an IG post asking about questions to be featured on the pod. Oh yeah, it was questions to be featured on the pod. Never mind. This all was your idea. Okay. I put in a couple, but a really interesting one hit this morning. So I know that money doesn't care if you're good or bad. Money doesn't care about what time you wake up or your habits or how you get the money or how you feel. But in that case, what does money care about? My initial answer is it just cares about how you feel about money itself, i.e. Wall Street Street bros who are miserable but have a ton of money coming into their experience. But it feels like it goes deeper than that, deeper than Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I just did the reset, so I'm sure it has to do with subconscious programming, secret desires, fear of benefits, definitely uncovered some around money. Thank you. But I would like to know what money cares about. If money doesn't care about your habits, how you get the money, how you feel, all that stuff, what does money care about? Thank you. No worries if you don't see this or don't feature it. Just a question I would love to pick your brain with. Well, it's your lucky day. Here I am (laughs) answering the question. So what does money care about? What does money respond to? 
we can summarize this in one word. Well, actually it's two words, but the main word is one word. It's your frequency. But we hear this word a lot in the manifestation world. And even me, when I was coming back awake and aware of what manifestation is, since this is clearly a past life mission for me. I've been in the manifestation realm for longer than this lifetime. But when I came back to the awakening of my purpose, my dharma, like what gift I have to bring to the world, even I was like, what the hell does frequency even mean, right? You hear this thrown so much, but what the frick is frequency? So I like to break it down to this. Your frequency is composed of your dominant Okay, this is a key word, and I want you to always remember that dominant is an important word. It is your dominant thoughts, dominant feelings, dominant beliefs, dominant assumptions, dominant attitudes, and identity, your dominant identity that you hold around life or an area of life which creates your dominant frequency. Now, remember, the reason why I say dominant is because we are human beings, which means that we're not always thinking the right thoughts or think or feeling the right. And by right, I just mean aligned, right? We're not always in a good mood. We're not always happy all the time. We're not always like we stumble, we get pissed, we get sad, things happen. Like, have you seen what's going on in the world today? damn, that's another thing I've been processing all week, right? And it's like, yeah, those things happen. Of course, we're going to get thrown off of our quote unquote manifestation game. But if the dominant expression of our frequency is something, then that's the dominant of what shows up in our life. So your dominant frequency is what everything in life responds to. We live in a mental universe. So That's why we call it infinite intelligence or divine mind. Everything is actually mental, but how it manifests is in 3D physical form. That's why we have a body. Yes, the body is important, but everything stems through the mental space. The spiritual gets converted into the physical through the mental. So whatever is mentally going on for you is what you will attract. Now, there's a book, an amazing book. It's a little bit harder of a read because it's so esoteric. But if you're into esoteric things like I am, it's called The Kebalion. And I will link the book in the show notes so you know exactly which one I'm talking about. Because sometimes when you say, when you hear something on a podcast, you're like, how do you spell it? And then you go and look it up and there's like 1200 authors with a book of the same name. So I will always make sure as much as I can to link what I'm talking about on the podcast, because I know that's important. It's just going to save you time. And then also if I ever miss something, email my team. They're always asking me like, hey, Catherine, someone asked about this. Da, 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 da. Do you know what you're talking about here? And then I'll just like close the gap there. Right. So it's called the Kabbalion, and it talks about universal laws, the most important universal laws, and particularly how the, me- the, the universe is a mental universe. Also, if you're someone who's like, well, Catherine, the esoteric is nice, but it doesn't really resonate with me, look into Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. He does a great job of going deep into the science rather than like science. He bridges the science with the spiritual, and he's really good at describing the science. Um, And he goes deep deep into how everything also starts in the mind, you know, um, in terms of manifestation, in terms of what you create in your reality. And then I also have my own way of breaking this down, both esoterically and also scientifically. If you're a student of mine in the Manifestation Babe Academy program, if you just go back to the first four modules, I break down exactly how reality is created. Regardless, reality, the reality you create, whether as a whole, or as a compartment, right? Like an area of life is a result of your dominant frequency or vibration around life as a whole or an area of life. Now, let's go back to the question specific to the person who asked about money and what money cares about. So what does money actually care about? Does money actually care about your dominant frequency? Well, not really. 
Money is a neutral resource. It's a tool. It doesn't have a mind of its own. Nothing really has a mind of its own. It doesn't really care much about anything. Um, because if you look at anything objectively enough, it's like, does this piece of paper that is green, like here in the United States, our money's green, like, does this really have a mind of its own? Can I really talk to it? <laughs> is it going to talk back to me? Well, no, not really. And if we look at money in the digital sense, these are just a bunch of numbers in on some website like chase.com or bankofamerica.com, right? I can only speak for the banks in the United States. I have no idea what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, but that's, you know, the common banks that we have here. And so d- do those numbers really care about anything? Well, no. But, 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 but money, as well as everything else, is still a part of the physical material world which is a reflection of the vibratory, electromagnetic, spiritual world. So even though it doesn't have a mind of its own, it still follows the same laws of manifestation as anything else would. If it exists in the material physical plane, as above, so below, right? It came from a spiritual plane. It came from a vibratory plane. It came from the ethers. It came from an electromagnetic root, okay? And this is where we come in charge of what we manifest into our lives. We take something we want and then we manipulate our frequency from the mental plane to attract it into our lives by matching our frequency to it. So remember the definition of frequency, right? Money follows the beliefs that you hold around money. It responds to how you feel about money, which in my opinion is determined by your dominant thoughts and feelings. Like when you look into your beliefs, if you break down a belief, it's a thought you keep thinking about over and over and over and over and over and over and over over again with an emotion attached to it, which creates a belief. Okay. So your feelings about money, very much linked to your beliefs about money, what assumptions you have about money. So what do you assume to be true about money? That's where people come up with laws like the law of assumption, which in my opinion, isn't actually a law, but it's more of a principle that is tied to the law of attraction, which a lot of people have split it up and made it its own thing. And then argue about which one's right. Law of attraction, law of assumption, they're the same fucking thing, (laughs) but it's just what you assume to be true is true true, right? That's the same thing. Whatever your beliefs are about about money is what you attract when it comes to your experience of money that is uh, ruled by the law of attraction. This goes with the identity you carry around money. Like, am I a poor person? Am I a rich person? Am I a wealthy person? What kind of person I am? And that, of course, will determine how money flows to you as well. But the thing here is, it's like, okay, so these things are important, right, Catherine? So a lot of people mix this up and make the mistake of thinking that, oh, I see. So I just have to be happy all the time and always feel good. Always feel good no matter what. Think positive, prioritize my joy and work very hard and money will always come to me, right? But what these people don't realize is that these happy people who always feel good have positive thoughts all the time, right? Work super hard, can still have negative beliefs around money, or at least beliefs that don't support the growth and accumulation and attraction of money. These people could very much love their life and love their careers and love their family, but still on a subconscious level, believe that there's never going to be enough money or they're just not the type of person who gets to have a ton of money based on their background. Their family may have grown up poor. They just don't have as many expanders and examples in their own lives to reflect to their subconscious mind that it's a possibility for them. And so that's why money isn't responding to their generic feeling good and their generic happiness in all the other areas. This is why you can be the goodest, you can be the happiest, you can be the most wonderful person on earth who never has a bad day ever and still struggle with money. And vice versa, like the person who asked this question mentioned the Wall Street bros, right? Like super grumpy individual hates their life or something, whatever the example was. You can be the grumpiest, meanest, most miserable human on earth who has a bad day every day and never struggles with money. Why? Because it's their frequency around money 
that money responds to. It's the spe- specificity that matters here. Their beliefs specific to money, their thoughts specific toward money, their feelings specific around money, not general thoughts, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, and identities that have nothing to do with money, but specific to money. That's how you have people who can thrive in one area of life, but really struggle in another. They can thrive in relationships, but struggle in their career. They can thrive in their career, but struggle with with relationships. This is why if you want to live a life that's spectacular in all areas of life, it's important to check your dominant frequency in all areas of life. I actually have a great example of this. When I was pregnant, I was having a launch, my um, first launch while pregnant. I think I was like 18 weeks pregnant launching MBA. Actually, no, let me take you a little bit before this. There was actually a launch prior to me being pregnant. It was actually the launch right before we went on this incredible trip to Africa in Rwanda and in Kenya with all the animals and the gorillas. And like, I talk about this trip (laughs) every day of my life because it was such a highlight. Well, leading up to to this trip, we had a launch and I also got sick during the launch and I was miserable in bed guys, miserable. Okay. I laid in bed the whole time. The moment I finished my live launch aspect of my launch, which is the free challenge that I usually do before my MBA launches. And the moment I finished with that Friday, I laid in bed and I did not get out of bed for another like 10 days. So my whole open cart and close cart, I was miserable in bed. And guess what happened? I had the biggest launch that I've ever had up until that point. Why? Because even though I was miserable in bed, I still had a very high frequency around money. I never doubted the launch. I have this core belief that money is always coming my way. I have unlimited sources of money um, that people buy my products, whether I am healthy or unhealthy, whether I'm sick in bed or I'm frolicking around Sedona. I was in Sedona at the time, like whether I'm on a hike right now or I'm laying in bed, coughing and sneezing and just, uh, you know, under the covers and sleeping. It didn't affect my money frequency in particular. My money frequency was high. It was clear. I felt great about money. And that's why I had such a big launch. When I was pregnant, same thing. If you've ever been pregnant, you don't quite feel good all the time. And so I have all these women that come to me all the time. They're like, Catherine, I'm pregnant and I feel miserable. I feel like I'm going to fuck up my whole life through this pregnancy and not manifest anything. And I go, whoa, 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 what the hell? Like, why would God give you such a gift of carrying a child if it's supposed to ruin your life? Like, no, that's not it. That's not at all it. You're not, you're not supposed to ruin your life or have your life go downhill just because you're carrying a child. Or I often hear this also presented to me in the question of grief. Like, oh my God, Catherine, and I have my students all the time. They're like, my sister died, my best friend died, and my dad died, and my mom died, and oh my God, and I don't know how to keep my vibe high. I don't want my whole life to fall apart. And that just doesn't happen that way. Yes, your frequency is very low in terms of the grief that you're feeling, but that's a natural process of you processing natural human emotions. That doesn't mean that all of a sudden you shifted all your beliefs around the rest of your life just because someone passed in your family. Like, of course, that impacts you in a way that causes certain traumas, right? That can cause certain traumas. And then that's your own work to to work through. But it doesn't all of a sudden mean that your bank account is going to dwindle because that didn't necessarily affect your beliefs around money or, or your beliefs around your marriage or your beliefs around health or your beliefs around whatever, right? There's specificities to this. And I could have like a really bad day and still make a ton of money. And then I can have a really good day and not make a ton of money. It just, it isn't necessarily linked as a generality. It's looking at your life more so in specifics where you're looking at your reality and being like, I don't like this part of my reality. So therefore here's my work to do. Or wow, this part of my reality is going really well. Like my, my career is thriving, but my my relationships suck. Like what are my beliefs? What are my attitudes? What's my identity? What are my thoughts? What are my dominant feelings in my career? Like, how can I cultivate the same energy? Because that all compose this energy. Energy is frequency, frequency is energy. What energy can I learn from in this area of my life that I could bring 
I can superimpose onto the area of my life that isn't doing so well. So you have to look at it more specifically rather than more generally, or even just generalizing other people and being like, well, Catherine, all these rich people that I know, they do really bad things to attract their money, but they still have money. How are they deserving of money? Well, it has nothing to do with deserving this. It has nothing to do with morals. It has nothing to do with those things. Those people just have clean frequencies around having money. They might not have clean frequencies around other areas of life. And how do you know that every area in their life is going well? It's not. I promise you that. You know, Karma always comes back around. They could be really struggling in their family. They could be struggling mentally. Their mental health could be horrible horrible, right? Their health could be horrible. I mean, there's all these there's all these complexities and I think that we sometimes get a little too general. We generalize things and then we just apply these blanket statement meanings to things that then make us miserable, right? So, if you want to have more money, my loves, my friends, my babes, if you want to have more money, dive deep into your money frequency. Okay. And yes, like this person mentioned, money frequency has a lot to do with subconscious fears, like feared losses, hidden benefits, secret desires. These are all terms that I use in my newest program, The Manifestation Reset, um, that you can purchase right now and get instant access to. It's a program that I designed for people who are frustrated around a specific manifestation. And they're like, ah, I just can't seem to get this one thing. What is blocking me? It's a 10-day program to help you dive deep and unblock it um, so that you can finally get what you most want in life. So um, you can go ahead and purchase that at manifestationbabe.com slash reset. I will also put that in the show notes as well, um, just so you have easy access to it. But it's a really great program where I dive deep into all of these ways, these really tricky ways in which your frequency around the specific manifestation could remain misaligned or out of resonance with the thing that you most want. And you, you don't really see it on a conscious level because it's all happening subconsciously. So that's where I talk about feared losses, hidden benefits, secret desires, and so much more. Um, So yeah, like I said, I'm going to be launching my vision board training on October 23rd. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the Manifestation Podcast voicemail uh, or Manifestation Babe podcast (laughs) voicemail inbox so I can feature more of your questions. This was so much fun for me to answer. Hopefully it helped you, gave you some clarity, explained some things. And with that being said, I love you so much and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.